بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. My name is Tariq Khalid. I'd like to welcome to our program here at Shadow Broadcasting Authority on Paradise and Hell, Jannah wa Jahannam. And I want to read uh, a narration from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In Abu Huraira, narrated that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there will come treacherous years in which the liar will be believed and the honest man will be disbelieved. The treacherous man is trusted and the trustworthy one is not trusted. And during which the Ruwai Bida will speak, it was asked, what is the Ruwai Bida? He said, the fool who speaks about public affairs. And this is collected by Al-Tabrani. Now, isn't this now? <laughs> and I don't want to go into politics and these things, but isn't this now where we find uh, ignorant people in positions of influence and particularly using this medium to convey their ideas? And some of the things I've heard people say <laughs> and do openly, it's, it's inconceivable that anyone could believe it. But... There are people who believe them, and there are people who follow them. And it's frightening. It's frightening that anyone can believe a person who is obviously a liar and so absurd in this and with such strong conviction. And when you look at people who are following them, they're also people of strong conviction in this person. And you're saying... This guy's a liar. It's clearly a liar. I mean, this is basic. We're not talking about someone who is really very devious. There are those like this. But when you look at it, what they're saying, what they're doing is really very plain and very simple. But the people have become blinded by their desires. Deaf, dumb, and blind. And as a result, they are following the most ignorant the biggest liars, the biggest cheats, who will do what? The ulterior motive is to lead the people to hellfire, regardless of what they're saying. You have people who are promising people, if you follow me, I will write you a note, and this note will allow you to enter paradise. I mean, this is unimaginable. Unimaginable. <laughs> you know, and, and people who say, you know, come and get this special prayer rug, pay X amount of dollars, I've written this prayer for you, and you will be blessed. Or come and get this water, and this water, I bless this water, and if you drink this water. And I heard one woman who was actually, I, I, I couldn't imagine. She was saying, and she was saying, I don't want anybody to come into my place. I won't say what she was preaching. <laughs> I don't want anyone to come into my place who doesn't have money. Come here, bring your money. And, and, and you know, there's an old um, adage of people saying, selling ice cubes. She was literally saying that, you know, I'm selling these ice cubes to you. This is what it's going to cost. Come and bring your money and you'll be blessed. I, I couldn't believe this. I couldn't believe it. There's actually someone who was doing, and it was a woman on top of that. Allah Akbar. So we're seeing today this kind of mass hysteria and the media is being used as a tool to promote darkness globally. We're not saying that there is not good that can be promoted, but we're seeing the evil that is being promoted is a very deep-seated evil which has many facets it is multifaceted, meaning that it is imposing itself on people in ways in which, number one, they can see. Number two, in ways in which they cannot see. Number three, in ways and means of which they could never conceive of. And if they really understood, they would never agree about it. So if we are 
concerned about the condition of our future, if we are concerned about the condition of our children and our progeny, then it's essential for every adult to pay attention to what is happening in the society in which you live and make a comparative analysis between how you're living and what the global norms are, regardless of what nation you live in, regardless of what religion you practice. And the Muslims, Allah has blessed us to give us superior knowledge without question. The people who want to contest that, fine. Okay, go ahead for your own sake. We believe this. Our scholars confirm this. Our Prophet Muhammad SAW confirmed this 14 years, 1400 years ago, and we accept it. So we need to address that. We need to understand that Allah has privileged us to be Muslims. He is giving us something he has given no other people. We need to grasp it for the sake of our own salvation, for the sake of future generations, that those generations will adhere to the rules, the regulations that have been prescribed for the believers. In this is a means and methodology for every single Muslim on this earth until the day of judgment to navigate through the toil and the difficulties of this world and it be a means and methodology for him to obey the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while facing these challenges and overall and ultimately being the means of his forgiveness by Allah and him entering paradise eternally. Now, the person who doesn't believe that, the person who doesn't want that, he is presently lost. It doesn't mean that he cannot change. We know many people who have changed by Allah's mercy and grace. We also, many people we know have died in error. For lack of a better description, they have died away from the belief in Allah, believing in all kinds of fake initiatives that have been promoted by Satan where they have been misguided based on their desires. They have become manipulated in such a fashion that they have been totally astray and they have died in that condition. Now, we're worried about that because we saw the people, we saw their acts, we knew them very well, and we know based on the guidelines that we have received that this is the habits this is the mentality of the people of hellfire. We cannot commit anyone to hellfire. We don't want to send anyone to hellfire. We want the people to be saved and enter Jannah. But it has become clear that these habits that the people had on this earth and also their disagreement with obeying the commandments of Allah, that they became slaves of their desires, not choosing to change, not choosing to look at alternatives and to make adjustments in their life, that they have died like this. Ask yourself, if you are a person in disbelief or if you know someone who is presently a disbeliever, do you want to die like this? Do you want that person to die like that? in disbelief that his, his next phase of his existence starts immediately after his death. His grave. His grave becomes his new reality. His grave will be a pit of hellfire until the day of judgment. This is not a joke. And people are taking this very, very lightly today. People are being cast into la-la land just become slaves of their desires, doing whatever they feel with whomever they want to, being lost in who they are, not knowing who they are, not knowing why they were created, not knowing what it is that they should be doing in this world, to being totally lost. And a promotion of that, which is wholesale, <laughs> and is going on predominantly throughout the earth today. 
And Ibn Kathir, Rahmatullah, spoke very clearly about the greatness of fruits of Jannah and concluded that by means of understatement, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala conveyed the abundance and greatness of those fruits. He said, the lotus tree does not bear any fruit other than some insignificant inferior fruits, and it is thorny. The acacia, I'm sorry, acacia tree is used only for shade in this world, not for fruit. But in paradise, there will be many of them growing beautifully and bearing such abundant fruit that a single fruit will have 70, 70 kinds of taste and color that resemble one another. 70 taste colors from one fruit. So how do you think the trees that are grown for their fruit on earth will be in paradise? Like apple trees, date palms, grapevines, and so on. How do you think the flowers will be? In short, they'll be what no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no human heart can comprehend. And we ask Allah to grant us some of this by his grace. And this is collected by Ibn Kathir. So where does that leave us in comparison if we are obsessed by the things in this world? And Muslim reported by Abdullah bin Qais that the Prophet said, the believers in Jannah will have a tent made of one single hollowed out pearl, 60 miles long, in which he will have a number of wives whom he will visit in turn, none of whom will see the others. Now people say, Oh, brother, oh, brother, what is this thing? You're talking about the men with the women. <laughs> Again, there will be no jealousy in paradise, and people will have everything that they want. Very important to understand that. And Tarmizi reports from Hakim bin Muawiyah that the Prophet of some said, in Jannah, in paradise, there is a sea of honey, a sea of wine, a sea of milk, and a sea of water, and the rivers flow out of these seas. These are things which are physical, which are inconceivable in this world. And they exist presently. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, <laughs> subhanAllah, has created them for the believers. For the people who are want to be misguided by the things of this world, fine. But Allah has created these things for the believers. And Bukhari and Muslim report that Abu Huraira Rinaldo said, Jibreel came to the Prophet and said, O Messenger of Allah, Khadija is coming carrying a container of food. When she comes to you, convey to her greetings of peace from her Lord and from me and give her the glad tidings of a house in Jannah made of brocade in which there is no noise or exhaustion. Can we conceive of that now? No. <laughs> Can we? For the people who, who don't want to believe it, don't believe. No problem. <laughs> believe in the things of this world only. In Jannah, in Al -Sayed, Abu Sayyid al-Qudri, Renato reported, Prophet said, in paradise there is a tree which the rider of a swift horse would need 100 years to pass beneath it. This is by Bukhari. 100 years. So I'm just narrating a few of the narrations of the descriptions of some of the things that are in paradise. And this as a means of wanting to entice our dear viewers away from the things which we are seeing developed by mankind in this world. And all of the things that they're doing and planning to do with artificial intelligence, how this can be and will be used and is presently being used to misguide people, take them away from the belief in Allah, take them away from the belief of what Allah has created and to pacify them with the things of this world which are all temporary. And these things which I mentioned are permanent, will exist forever, and can change as Allah wants. As you heard, one single fruit, 70 different tastes, seven different colors, seven, seven zero colors, tastes, one single fruit. And if Allah wants, that fruit can discontinue to change, to taste which you never conceived of before. But that is distinction. But 
we need to understand something. Paradise is not something to be achieved very easily. We have people in this world who work aggressively for their whole lives, for their achievements. And many of them, they reach them and many of them don't. And many of them die long before. And they didn't reach that which they had made so much effort on. And they died in disbelief. That's the worst thing. It's not they died before they achieved what they were set out to do in this world, but they died in disbelief. This should be our biggest fear, that I die with disbelief in Allah. I die with disbelief in paradise and hell. I believe only in the temporary world which I'm seeing, feeling, tasting, smelling, hearing that this is my world, that I become seduced by it and not aware and conscious of that which Allah has created far, far above and beyond anything that we've ever seen or could ever conceive of in this world. And there are many things in this world which are extraordinary. And Allah has created them for us to see, to believe, <laughs> as evidences to believe. And today we are aware of more of this ever before because of the technology that is available, that people have gone there with cameras and taking pictures so we can see live many things which are amazing, which we could never ever conceive or we would never see normally. It should only do what? It should only confirm our belief. It should reaffirm that our creator has made this as a sign for us about who he is, why we should worship him, what it is that he has planned for us, what it is that he is offering us, that which no mind has ever conceived of, no eye has ever seen, so what we're seeing is just like a grain of sand compared to what Allah has created for the believers. Take out the time now. If you're in disbelief, think about this. Think about it. What, is, what it is that you have as a disbeliever and what you're losing if you die in this condition. In this condition. And if you have friends or family members who are stuck, please relay this message to them. Now is the time. Open your mind, open your heart to the truth for the sake of your old soul. Accept Islam before you die. My name is Tariq Khalid. I'd like to thank you for joining us here at Charter Broadcasting Authority on Paradise and Hell, Jannah with Jahannam. And we ask Allah SWT to give all of our viewers, though believers, the believers, paradise. And for all the disbelievers, may you be guided to that path that will lead you to paradise and grasp hold to it for the sake of your own soul. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.